I think it's fair to say that receptionists, when they're employed by firms, what they do is they go through what they, what they can and what they can't do, and then they say to them, the only thing that you need to remember, first off, is that when a courier walks into the building, you have to pick up the phone and ignore it. All right? Let the geezer stand there for as long as possible, and then look up nonchalantly and you say, can I help you? Receptionists, oh, they tend to look down the nose at us, especially when it's raining and you look absolutely terrible. They look right down the nose at you. You know, as if there's something special. I mean, I went to Sachi's once, and uh, sort of one of the women, I left my bio on the counter, and she just picked it up and threw it at me as I walked out. Mm, blimey, yeah, remember. Vogue House, man. The girlies in Vogue are just outrageous. I mean, they'll probably confirm that to you. They need a good spanking somewhere, <laughs> you know? The standard um, question is, is it raining outside when you walk in dripping wet? Yeah, they can be sarcastic sometimes, do you know what I mean, about, about the state of you and the state of your parcel when you bring it in there, because you just get it in there however. Do you know what I mean? I mean, they give us a package, we stick it in our bag. If it gets wet, it gets wet. We just, as long as it gets there, that's our job. You do get some stupid deadlines. I mean, like, uh, I had one, I had a three o'clock deadline to get to the Observer, and they gave me the parcel at quarter to four. I go, yeah, I've got to be tired this outside, love. Basically, I mean, we're considered the low of the low. Um, anybody who's on security, can treat a dispatch rider how they like and often do. And anybody that's on a reception does as well. And they're the lowest in their office. So uh, it gives them some, somebody to wipe their feet on, doesn't it? I mean, you see these guys who are, who are on security. I mean, most of them are pretty mindless individuals. And they have like the medals and the badges. And I'm sure they get the medals and get awarded for being awkward to dispatch riders. To get into uh, British Airways now, they, it's just high security and um, they spent something like £10 million on defending the place. But to get in, they have to, you have to have a plastic wallet with some numbers written on it. And to get this, what you have to do is to go into a security box and ask the geezer on 90 quid a week if you can have one. He gives you one and then you get past all these million pounds worth of uh, high tech and you can walk around British Airways and oh, well, you can probably live there. Uh, you know, go on their wages or something, <laughs> but you've got to have this bit of, bit of plastic. And yesterday I took great exception to queuing up for my piece of plastic, so I refused to go in. And I thought that this would bring down British Airways, but it didn't, because what happened was another £90 a week geezer had come out and took the parcel off of me. I hate them all. Every single one of them. They're idiots. Oh, Just got to treat them as idiots. They look at you, then they stop. Lemmings. No, they give them a curve and that's their cliff. They don't look, they don't look that hard. Mainly, mainly foreigners with uh, what we call right hand hook neck. That's where, that's where they walk out, walk out into the oncoming traffic looking the opposite way. It's not a widely known fact, but pedestrians account for the deaths of more motorcyclists in London than uh. all other types of accidents put together. The theory is, I started off like you'd go behind them or go in front of them, but now I've learned if they see you, they'll sort of run. So if you aim for them, chances are they'll either run forwards or backwards and you'll probably miss them, but it's not guaranteed. <laughs> I saw him running between the cars and I slowed down, I came to a halt as he came out of the gap and he did a handspring off the side of me, over the top of me, knocking the bike on top of me and it was resting on my, on my foot and I couldn't reach the bars to get it off my foot. And I'm looking up going, move the bike, move the bike and he's just going, oh Sully, oh Sully like this and I'm going, move the fucking bike because it was like burning its way through my boot. And I'm hoping to God she doesn't step out in front of me. So as, just as I come, just as I come up to her, she does the step back, and I, I have, to, I hit my anchors, and they're really good. You know what I mean? So I've flown over the, I've flown over the bike like head first, like a bullet, head butted her straight in the boat race. She's gone mash straight on the floor. So like, I'm like, oh no, you know. So I picked her up, put her on the side, and she's all dazed and everything. And then she wakes up going, Manuel, Manuel. So I thought, fuck Manuel, I'm off. Echo 6 Sagan. Yankees going to North West State. You're 2-1. Excuse me, Echo 4K. Okay, yeah, okay, you're there already. Hang on one second. 3-5, three, 3-5. Five, three, five. Six, one. I mean, the controller is the brunt of everything, and we've got two great controllers. Um, 
Trevor, Trevor, Prime Porky Walky, and um, Steve Davis, who's like the mouth of mouth of the South, mouth of South London. He's from Millwall in Bermondsey, and like they get it all the time. Where are you? Stevie. Go on, Steve. Say it all. Fuck. Go on, give it the large one for us. How you doing, Al? I still ain't got me bike, mate. But um, say something nice for us. Say something nice for you, Al. You say who you talking to out there? Come on, the mouth of the south. Let's have it. Oh, I can't talk to anyone. I've had a bad weekend, mate. I was up and down like a yo-yo. Yeah, we know that, mate. <laughs> you know what it is, Al. Your brain goes in and out of gear. You know, what's going on? Saturday night, all of a sudden, it's Monday morning. You've got to come to work. Controllers, right? You know, these c**ts on here, right? These people on here, Mr. and Mr. Sarcastic. These, these people are, um, uh, uh, you know, they're trapped in this little room. Where, um, and uh, and they wear a suit and a tie because it, you know they, in case visitors call on them, we've got to look nice and everything. The fact that they live in a basement flat and do drugs on on weekends got nothing to do with it, right? And they get in that little room and they treat us the same way as everybody else in society treats us as a nuisance. It's only other people's misconceptions about you. I mean, out of this stuff, I'm not just like anyone else, really. It's just that I prefer to do this sort of job. I think that's the problem a lot of people have with careers. They think there's something wrong with them. They're just doing it because they're hard up and they can't get any other sort of job. Basically, it springs from the fact that people are anti-motorcyclists. They tend to associate most people with riding motorcycles as being troublemakers. And uh, I think that goes back a long way before dispatch riders were around. Though I think it's because of the way you look, they assume that you're going to be uh, quite a rough individual and um, you know they've got to get a short answer if they speak to you. We, we are self-sufficient um, capitalists you know we don't we don't expect people to, to give us anything you know we do we do our own jobs um, and we hold our heads up uh, uh, because of it.